will see we call a cue board. We use the cue so that we don't encounter confusion or disrupt the lecture. It puts everybody into talk as the name implies. So you'll have 30 seconds to ask your question. If you have a question, please click on the cue button. This will put you in line to speak when the presenter is ready to stop and take questions. The board remain paused until the presenter is ready. Our lectures are recorded to our YouTube channel so that we ask that you please take a seat and turn off anything that might distract the speaker or for cooperation. We believe this will enable everyone to get and this is definitely a subject I know nothing about, but talk about anyhow, okay? By those of you who are doing some pointing and clicking and everything, I want you to know Smith and Wesson was the original point and click interface, okay? So, uh, hello. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, can you guys all hear me? Yes. Yes, we okay, hear good. You, Lauren. I, I didn't hear any sound back. I tried to tell a joke. Nobody laughed. So I said, "What the heck does that mean?" All right. <laughs> so, what is art artificial intelligence? You know, there's an awful lot of uh, conversation on this, and uh, I will tell you something. Look at around right here. Am I a female avatar being controlled by a handler? Artificial intelligence? How about all of you? I mean, you're wandering around here. Now, this wouldn't be what you would call regularly artificial intelligence. However, it's worth noting that part of the entire concept of artificial intelligence is actually uh, putting human brains into what they call a machine, whatever that is, which we'll get to later. So, in fact, putting our brain into these uh, avatars in a minor way uh, could be artificial intelligence. You don't have to agree with anything I've said today, by the way, or what I'm talking about, but that's what I'm thinking. So what do scientists have in mind as artificial intelligence? Their idea is an academic field of study which studies how to create computers and computer software that are capable of intelligent behavior. That's the little quote they like, and uh, that's what they say. But to me, there is a reverse science no one talks much about. I'll get back and I'll bounce in between AI and thoughts that run around the periphery of it along the way. But here's a sidebar thought. Today's world, the internet is filled with much of humanity's thoughts, ideas, desires, paranoias. It's a giant brain. And we, like organisms, access it. In a time before, or the history of the world, till about 2000, I know the internet existed before, but it's really about 2000 when the explosion of the internet occurred. So anyhow, in a time before the 20th century even, if you wanted to make bula bays, you more than likely had to either study under your mom or get a job with a chef. From 1901 till about 2001, you either had your mom teach you, you studied with a chef, or you bought a cookbook. Today, you can search and find the recipe plus a video showing you, as the cook, what to do. So many of us are now artificially intelligent. That's what I'm getting at here. The reverse of installing software into a computer so that it can function like a human being, we now have software that installs information into our brain. And it's instantaneous. We can gather it. Okay, perhaps bullet base is not the example you wanted. But let's look at this. Today, nearly all sports and financial news you get is written by a computer. Even those talking heads on TV have simply been fed by a computer on not just the score, but the color as well. So although that's not really artificial intelligence, it's moving in that direction when a computer can take the weather and other factors and actually write a colorful story on what happened at a tennis match. And as a matter of fact, if you're interested, they actually showed where uh, a major sportscaster, a sports writer, 
and a computer went up against each other to see how long would it take the computer and how good would it be versus this sports writer. Well, the sports writer did not finish as fast as the computer. The computer and the sports writers were pretty close, although the sports writer was a little more colorful, but not that much more. But also, that computer had already written 10,000 other stories by the time that sports writer had finished his story. So when we talk about artificial intelligence, we may actually be talking about a symbiotic relationship between man and machine, which is already occurring. And what is a machine? What is human? I mean, we talk about machines being pieces of metal with circuit boards and, 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 and mechanical movements and stuff like that. But in fact, uh, you know, there is a question of what happens when you begin to use organisms in a machine and you meld them together or taking a human and installing a chip inside them. That's singularity, which I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with. But <laughs> we aren't far away from creating something alive that can think. And then what is life, you know? Because if we're going to talk about artificial intelligence, and before I get on to artificial intelligence a little further, note that we now have Siri, Cortona, and Echo. In case you guys don't know, that's Amazon's new kit parade. All women with artificial intelligence. Don't you think there are men probably creating these stupid things? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and Google, too. I mean, come on, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so anyhow, so why ask the question? It goes back to artificial intelligence, where the meaning is about creating, thus artificial, something that can think. You think, uh, not that we're religious, but a lot of people believe in God, and God created man. Uh, well, we like how that came out, but anyhow, the point is, is that that makes us artificially intelligent? Interesting. What happens when we create such a machine and it learns to make itself into a biological? What would that mean? Would it no longer be AI? What would it be? Yeah. So, I'm not sure if you saw the movie Ex Machina. Uh, Ma 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 what is it? Ex Machina, right? Is that how you pronounce it? Ex Machina? Did anybody see that film? Yeah. I did. It was really good. Yeah. Or Lucy. How many people saw Lucy? Did anybody see that film? That was great, too. Yeah. Two, two great that films. Was awful film. Awful film, Lucy. Oh, that must be Haley. Yes, I know Haley's voice, and I know that if she, she didn't like Lucy, so I know she's here. Hello, Haley. Hi, hon. <laughs> okay. So Lucy is more about human intelligence expanding into the 90% of the brain we don't use. But in the end, Lucy is 100% brain usage and creates herself into a machine and finally puts it all on an incredible flash drive, which really amazed me, this flash drive, because, it, it, I mean, you know, that's what they handed over at the end, if you remember. It was a flash drive. Yeah. Yep, to the infinite energy. Right. But still, she had herself almost in some machine way. Ex Machina is about a computer genius who creates Ava, a machine endowed with all the thought and connection to the Internet. And once again, it's a guy creating a girl that's sort of like a sex object because maybe the nerd has somebody that's attractive that'll like him, okay? Yeah. It pays him, too. Yep. <clears throat> we'll get back to all this again, but let's take a quick look at the economics of AI. I know I'm jumping around, but I need to pop all these thoughts out to you. I didn't bring any charts. I didn't bring YouTubes. I didn't bring any graphs. I didn't bring any uh, swag for you to take home. Uh, nope. Sorry. No pens with AI <laughs> on them, you know. This is just going to be you know, thoughts you have along the way. Right answer them, but this is different, okay? And this is an <laughs> on the normal way of looking at this. So the economics of AI. As we move towards AI, we can already see why some of the fears are valid. Note computer code continues to destroy jobs.
at our lowest level. Those who need to earn a life to transfer that wealth to the richest. Boys, thank you so much, Lauren. <laughs> Anybody? Yeah. There, there was I a love the scanner. Paper. What? Was that? I do. I love the scanner. Yeah. There was a great comment in the paper the other day regarding this uh, that a uh, fellow found it quite interesting because he saw this friend of his. She was checking herself out, and uh, <clears throat> she was uh, earning about 300000 a year in New York, but she was checking herself out, you know. And – and this is on AI. He talked about all of this, too. There was a, a double book there. This, that part's called something work. Shadow work is what they call it, okay? But four to six stations and one person is there when you're, when you're doing this, which means four to six people that used to check you out don't check you out anymore because there's no job for them anymore, Okay. Driverless cars will eradicate cabs and limousine drivers. How about driverless planes? That might just eliminate the freaking passengers. <laughs> As you take out payroll, those profits roll into the pockets of the owners, slowly moving up the food chain, replacing insurance agents, financial advisors. Already you know about robo-advisors. And the worry that AI could do to white-collar jobs what steam power did to blue-collar ones during the Industrial Revolution. Therefore, this work, looking at the economic side, because of digital finance and Ken shows about Ken shows. natural language search. Well, it will then financial reports, company filings, historic like and replies all in natural language in seconds. Okay? It's not really AI, but don't you think that's moving in a direction? How many in not well, let's say human intelligence and that's not, not equal to, to when I'm not AI yet. <laughs> Eventually, we move forward. Eventually, we can see this. Jeff Bezos sits collecting from sales and no other employee is needed since the machines prepare themselves. How about that? <laughs> no, it's not AI. You're correct. It's a bit of absurdity, but not without some merit. So back to AI and perhaps Terminator, the great movie, right? Wasn't Terminator sort of AI? Do you do you think that movie was about AI? Those of you who watched it? I thought it was about a big Austrian lug. But anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> but let's not assume the machines would want to kill all of us. But would the leader of the machines want to make more machines that tend to humans doing nothing? What about if the machine became smarter, stronger than the leader of humans? Perhaps they'd have one of those little pirate parlays going on, huh? Right. <laughs> yeah. Which may lead to a completely different thought. Population control. The rationalization of such AI to decide not all people are created equal. Now, you may think, oh, like of people who talk about AI, that's simple. We're just going to stick in a little program code, make sure those machines don't do that. They're going to do what we want them to do. Uh, yeah, let's look at this. Let's be really honest about this. A creator of AI would probably think such that not all people were created equal and may inadvertently or even on purpose stick in a little line of code that would make the program decide all people are not, not equal, right? That's a good – this is a great point, Shirley, and I'm going to get to that. Uh, but maybe I'll answer that right here, okay, because you'll see me answer it again later. Maybe we aren't needed at all, okay? Why should we – why should these machines that are now have 
AI decide we're worth letting sit around in some, you know, utopia. So here's Elon Musk. How many of you know who Elon Musk is? Everybody out there? Mm. Oh, what's this? I'm, I missed this one thing somebody put down. Oh, I never saw Chobbits, an anime focused on relationship between human and humanite mainly starts to fall in love with one. Well, that's also like that movie, AI, that came out in 2001, which was enough to bore you to death, too, you know. Oops, I'm sorry if you really liked it, okay. <laughs> but Elon Musk, I think you know who that is. Tesla, Solar City, SpaceX fame. This is a quote from this, and I'm going to have a little bit of from the, him in a discussion with someone else. He said, I think we should be very careful about artificial intelligence. If I were to guess, like, what our biggest existential threat is, it's probably that. So we need to be very careful with artificial intelligence. Increasingly, scientists think there should be some regulatory oversight, maybe at the national and international level, just to make sure that we don't do something very foolish. With AI, we are summoning the demon. In all these stories, those stories where there's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, it's like, yeah, he sure can control the demon. That didn't work out in any of those stories, okay? Now, Musk isn't worried about simpler forms of AI, such as driverless cars, smart air conditioning, or the dangers is when a machine can rapidly educate itself, and he explains it like this. I'll try to look down at what's going on here. Oh, yeah, Bradbury's phenomenal. That's great. And Asimov's iRobot is phenomenal. Both of those are. Well put, Lauren. If there was a very deep digital superintelligence that was created that could go into rapid recursive and improvement in a non-algorithmic way, it could reprogram itself to be smarter and iterate very quickly and do that 24 hours a day or millions of computers. Well, there it is, okay? That's right out of Elon, okay? To that, there was a little comment because he was sitting at the time with a fellow by the name of Neil deGrasse Tyson, which is an American astrophysicist, cosmologist. Cosmologist, I, maybe I need some cosmology. My makeup's a little shot. Cosmologist, author, and science communicator. <laughs> Anyhow, Tyson interjected with a chuckle. Then that's all she wrote. And Musk answered, that's all she wrote. I mean, we won't be like a pet lab if we're lucky. I have a pet Labrador, by the way, Musk said. Well, we'll be their pets, Tyson said. It's like the friendliest creature, Musk said, then letting out his lone chuckle of the segment. No, they'll domesticate us, Tyson said. Yes, exactly, said Musk, sounding serious again. So we'll be lab pets to them, Tyson said. Yes, Musk said, or something strange is going to happen. They'll keep the docile humans and get rid of the violent ones, Tyson theorized. Yes, Musk said and then breed the docile humans, Tyson said. Before I go to the next part of this, I think you'll get a kick out of this because, again, you know, we think that dogs like us. They really don't like us or do like us. They've been bred over thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of years to wag their tail and the bad ones taken out so that generally they're docile, okay? Exactly, and food is part of it, Geo, among other things. All right. Musk then stressed the importance of what the superintelligence is programmed to optimize. It might seem appealing to have a computer figure out how to make us happier, but that could backfire. It may conclude that all the unhappy humans should be terminated, Musk said, or that we should all be captured and with dopamine and serotonin directly injected into our brains to maximize happiness because it's concluded that dopamine and serotonin are what cause happiness and therefore maximize it. Okay? So I think that might bring up that uh, comment you brought up before as to what's going to happen with that. I can't go back to see the comment, but I think it goes back to that. All right? So here we are looking at this whole piece of puzzle and questioning and today you know you guys came in artificial intelligence uh, Lauren's gonna come in with some sort of like super code and we're gonna be able to take that code and turn on our oculus rifts and get them all going and doing stuff like that okay but that's not my goal today and my goal today is we're gonna take about a half an hour of this 
and then we're going to switch over to a bunch of questions, and some of the answers may come from some of the people in the audience, as well as from what I have looked into, okay? The question of whether AI will be real is no longer a question. Does anybody doubt that AI will come? Is there anybody who thinks that this will not happen? I didn't see any typing, so I assume you all believe it will happen. The question is when. And I'm going to suggest that the when is sooner than you think. The near future, 10 years. Now, I want to explain something. When I say 10 years, yeah, all things are 10 years off exactly, Gio. But when I say 10 years, it's interesting to note the Internet was around for a while, but really didn't get going until about 25 years. You could say the Internet's been around where it has been out in the population. Prior to that, it was really a defense and, uh, and university tool. Dog years or our years. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so... When I say 10 years, remember, that's a very early stage. If you go back and think about the Internet in 1990, two, three, four, when you were doing 1,200 or less, you were the beginnings of this. That happens in the next 10 years, from 2000 and to 2010, and then the next five. So take the 25 years and break it down, and you look at the beginning of AI, and you look at 25 years from now, or less, and it's fully operational. Not to the extent. Well, that's interesting you say that. When you say that nobody predicted the Internet, Calliope, I, I'm asking, when are you talking about that? Are you talking about the original university level of it? Are you talking about the defense level of it? Or are you talking about when it first hit into... Uh, the World Wide Web. Maybe you can tell me. I'll wait a second and see if you type it in now. Years ago. Well, years ago. Yeah. Yeah, you can't. You can, look, we can have all sorts of things. ISIS could be running everything, in which time all the computers will be gone. No AI. And you'll be, uh, you know, have your hands cut off for doing Second Life, Okay. So, yeah, all that's possible. But you can see how many things you move forward on and may not predict yourself, but there are plenty of minds out there that saw how fast what the smartphone would do. There was tremendous amount of work done when the first smartphone came out and talked about things of where we are today. But it took a lot of technology to move it. Uh-huh. Yeah, and there are people who always are naysayers, and sometimes they're right, and sometimes they're wrong. Yes, I figured Fooey wasn't where you were going with it, okay, Lauren? I mean, even I knew that. So, <coughs> how about the governments? You heard Musk talking about governments controlling it. Governments are going to keep it from getting out of hand, right? How many people believe that statement? We can't control who's got nuclear bombs, right? Oh, is that good what you're chewing? Sounds good. <laughs> we have an eternity. <laughs> that's no problem. <laughs> We've had an eternity of news showing governments are s as corrupt as anyone can imagine. So can we really have governments control it? They tried to put Skynet's plug and it got pissed. Yeah. Well, you know, that that's the question. It's, it's out there. So... Is there anybody here that doesn't believe that artificial intelligence is on its way? Forget about saying how soon. Do you believe that – I mean, we, we've had people looking all over the universe for other people, you know, and that hasn't worked out so well. It's coming. Okay, Lauren. The FCC has assured the authority, and we know that they are good, and just people are always affected. <laughs> yeah, and the NSA won't ever use it, right? Yeah, right. You know, all these – Little movies have a segment of truth. It's cold fusion are coming. It and cold fusion are coming, right, Dusky? Right. However, look at where we are right now. Uh, currently, economic companies like Google, Facebook, 
are more concerned with machines recognizing us and what we do to convince us of what we need and when. Now, there are some people who say that the human brain is uh, a living computer. Now, I don't know if you agree with it, disagree with it, but there are those that say, I will be like in the machines. Yeah, exactly. It's a great book, but what, our brains are an analog computer? <laughs> First face, first. Oh, do they have a face ATM? You know, <laughs> if they don't like your face, they immediately just blow you away, right? <laughs> yeah. But <coughs> if you take a look at the human brain as a computer with infinite, with a finite, with finite capabilities, they now say our brain is a tremendous capabilities, but they're still finite. There's only so much that a brain can do, and they're now narrowing down what the total computations are. They're big, but they know what they are. Fortunately, we have 7 billion of those brains with many different capabilities. So that's interesting, because are you going to make 7 billion different artificial intelligent machines or whatever, all thinking about different things? <laughs> no, no, that's terrible, Geo. <laughs> Oh, no, no, not that Geo didn't say that. Right. That's why I rent a brain. <laughs> That's yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll need other things besides your face to, to rent a brain. You know, as they say, programming is like sex. One mistake and you have to support it for the rest of your life. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but... <coughs> Thus, we may not see the rise of machines, but in the end, the rise of humanity, and brings one to Frankenstein. <laughs> uh, I seem to have lost the page here. My computer didn't print. Ah, there's the rest of it. Okay, I knew this thing when you do this whole thing. So, <clears throat> I don't know how many of you know Frankenstein, the book. I don't know how many of you have read it. You've seen the movie, but the movie isn't really follow the book, but it's pretty good, okay? It's a book written by a woman, Mary Shelley, when she was 18, published when she was 20, and in case you don't know, she was married to Percy Shelley, if you know who that is, okay? The monster, a.k.a. machine, wants the doctor to create a mate. Oh boy, this sounds like ex machina, right? <laughs> to create a mate. And if so, they will vanish into South American wilderness, never to appear, reappear if Victor grants his request. How many of you knew it was Victor Frankenstein? Does anybody know that it was Victor Frankenstein? And the monster was just a monster? A lot of people think Frankenstein's the monster, you know? Oh, good. That's great. Okay, Ray. Yeah. <coughs> so, working on the female creature on Orkney Island, Victor Frankenstein is plagued by premonitions of disaster particularly the idea that creating it, creating a mate for the creature might lead to the breeding of a race that could plague mankind. Ooh, sounds a little bit like what we're talking about, right? Mm. Victor destroys the female creature after he sees the monster watching through a window. And of course, you know the rest. The monster kills Victor's betrothed Elizabeth on the wedding night and runs away with Victor, following him to the North Pole for revenge. But he doesn't kill him once he catches up to him. And the conclusion of the narrative is by Captain Walton. And I'll let you read what the conclusion is. But how prophetic when you think back to Ex Machina. I will not mention the ending here, but in some ways similar to Frankenstein, except what will we confront when an AI reaches past our avatar and into our souls? This was a little shorter than I planned, so I'm three minutes shorter. I want to have an open question. I said, uh, unlike maybe what you do normally, I will try to answer these, but this is more philosophical and uh, a view of, of how, you know, questions I think many of us think. Can we go to these movies? We like uh, uh, fiction. Uh, we see this, and, uh, and questions can be answered. I'm willing to answer any questions directed at me or throw them up to Haley to answer. Said, or, or <laughs> thing that I thought would last about a half an hour and then open it up. So I, I didn't do an hour's worth because 
feel like you're I'm lost great. The you're great. You did excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's Good job. Ask him some questions. Her. Her. I'm sorry. Excuse me. And yeah, also, if, if we have very many uh, questions, we can use the cue to, to line yeah. up. Or if you have some input you want to put, but you don't even need to give some thought process. Forward. That's what it's about. You know, it doesn't have to be a question. It usually be a concept one of you have. And you can either go and voice or then about God and all this. Well, that's an interesting question about God, okay? Uh, if we get to what is God, <clears throat> I'm going to have to take all the way back in time, right up to the loveliness of all the various religious groups, and at which point, as Camus has said, you will have to commit suicide, go back to not thinking about <laughs> God, whichever you prefer. <laughs> By the way, you know, some people, you know, God created man. Therefore, are we artificial intelligence? I brought that up earlier. That's a good question to ask. Yeah, that'd, be, that'd be a good place to start the flip. The Jews have a tradition that is, that is Gollum. Let's see, wait a minute. They have a tradition that has Gollum's in it. Artificial life forms are consistent with monotheistic religions. Sure, why not? Captain Kirk had them, too. And Captain <laughs> Kirk was really knew what the hell was going on, right? <laughs> Can you sell him? Right? <laughs> I have no clue what those words mean. Yeah, let's see. What well, words? I, the computer scientists, put together to make the best computer, and asked, "Is there God?" And I, oops, I'm missing. Is there a God? And it replied, "Now there is." <laughs> 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 yeah, great. You know, one of the reasons I'm not convinced. Artificial intelligence have come along right away. Is I once realized my keyboard said not found and said press F1 to continue. So, I mean, that's right. Hey, that's a problem. <laughs> what does God need? Yeah. Well, the people that are going to program using artificial intelligence, you know, here's Program of thought. Puts two glasses of water on the bedside table. We're going to sleep. A full one in case he gets thirsty. In case he doesn't. Okay. Uh, oh, I've never. I've, I've. Oh, in the. I actually had a sign copied to me from Oscar. They can't make Google Glasses work. Nah. Well, <coughs> Google Glasses. There's a whole new thing coming out. They're wine glasses now. <laughs> it's people that whine about these glasses that they paid a thousand dollars for. <laughs> no longer supported. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it, great about this meeting, and, and and this is terrific, and and I hope that the little comedy thing we do is too is that so often today, people aren't even into connecting with each other because they can simply look it up on, you know, Google. They can ask, answer their own question, their own thought, and know their own way they feel about things. As a matter of fact, there's actually some thought that people only watch what they're interested in. So if they're liberal, they don't have any conversation with conservatives, and conservatives, none with liberals, which is the way it should be, I think. You know? <laughs> Yeah, <clears throat> but uh, artificial intelligence, well, the working towards this goal is coming rapidly. And when your job is taken over, it has arrived. Oh, the media is full of shit. You know, I, I, I've turned it all off. I don't watch any of it anymore. You ever notice that all they do is run around looking for some little thing to make you crazy? So that you get upset and 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 can't enjoy your life. I mean, that's, that's it, actually a really, really good video. It uh, follows pretty much what you just <laughs> this little. That, that right? I really appreciate this one. All right, I'll keep I'll keep that for later. Yeah. 
fact, it's probably, if people are media on, it's probably playing in the background here. Oh, good. Well, no, I turned it off oh, because La okay. said, uh, said she didn't want to okay. use YouTube, okay. so I turned it off here tonight. Yeah, but, but I mean, if you guys want to play, play how long? Uh, 12 minutes. It look oh, 15 minutes. It says, 15 yeah. minutes. Oh. Yeah. I don't have 15 minutes. No. We want yeah. our own time later. <laughs> Is, is, that's what he did. The program says the program is does it take to change a light bulb? The famous light bulb is not a problem. Right, Dad. Calling it near. Yeah, this one I'm not sure what I laughed, right? <laughs> Why did the chicken cross the road? <laughs> because it couldn't get Amazon to deliver. <laughs> Let's see, what does this say? All right, from Peter McLean. I think the answer to question as to when AI will arrive requires in response to when does a baby attain consciousness. The answer may be that AI will gradually over time take on a coherent. What happened to my stupid thing? Coherent form that could be very legit. I mean, <clears throat> my my thing there is is that is that um, I mean, it may be taking on form now. But right. at, one, at, what, at what point will we be able to look back and say, oh, it started back then, we, we just didn't see it? Well, that's the answer, Mac, and that what, what query, how would you prove that it, it actually is itself? But one thing that I do believe, I think most of you believe, actually, is if you can think it, it can eventually be. Mm -hmm. If you can think it. It probably will happen, yeah. Well, there are some things you think about that may not be, you know. Uh, uh, no, that's for here second life. I don't think anyone's. Uh, we've gotten to the point in society that I don't know if there's any new thinking. Uh, uh, Pretty much everything that you think of has been thought of. Oh, be careful with that. Somebody said that hundred and something years ago, and that didn't turn out to be an accurate thought. <laughs> yeah, they're going to close the office about hundred years Exactly. Ago. <laughs> they said they we are spending everything already. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's exactly. <laughs> the head of the patent office said <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, we can keep praying for open source and it might happen. <laughs> Anything went wrong. <laughs> I just have a um, link if anyone wants some further listening. It's a podcast I listened to a while back that was um not just AI but about like human relationship with computer. I really liked I it, so it. if anyone's interested. Yeah. Is that it right there? Yeah, the link I just posted right, in the chat. I'm going to save that. I want to. I would love to. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's great. There's a lot of people here thinking about this who are contemplating it, and I, I thought it took a comedian to talk about AI. Notice the Frankenstein complex is full force here. What's the Frankenstein complex? Mean? I might miss it. What is the Frankenstein complex? Asimov's term. term Which yeah. means what? Tell us because <laughs> we will fear robotic intelligence. Um, mm. I don't think we're smart enough to fear it. I think we'll fear it after it's already coming to get us. <laughs> Up until then, we'll go, nice little computer, nice little computer. And 
not that serious. Intelligence. If it starts to get out of hand, I'm just going to walk up to it and say, do you want me to reboot you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, so the wise, what? I don't think that would be wise, Dave. I don't think that would be wise, Dave. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> 2001. When was the last time you saw that movie? When it, when it came out. It's very slow <laughs> now. And, uh, and Zusa is a bit boring and the pen floating in the air is cute. Yeah, I see. <laughs> the, uh, what was it? The... 70 millimeter, what was, what was mm -hmm. it? You had, had apps. How was that? Oh, it was phenomenal. Was it? Yeah. I saw it in a crappy little movie theater, some little art cinema. It was terrible. <laughs> if you saw it on a square screen or a flat screen, you, you, it really destroyed it. Max might prove that there will be no much intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> there won't even be much human intelligence. <laughs> As soon as babies are um, old enough to hold the bottle, they'll get past a cell phone to learn to play games with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's well, the newest newest line of hacking will be uh, children on uh, touch devices. Many great thoughts come out of all of us uh, when we're young. Really, you know, don't have the same limitations as we get older, like paying for the mortgage and shit like that. <laughs> right. And there's a young man, I can't remember his name, who uh, his uncle died of pancreatic cancer. And at 13, 14, he began Googling all the information on it and began putting something together. And by the time he was 16, he's actually come up with a way of uh, diagnosing pancreatic cancer at a very early stage, so taking where 100 people a day will die to probably almost eradicate it. it it's not a cure, it's just an early detection. Let's see, what did you say here? The, the, it seems to me that the elite human race, the most, most wealthy would lose if they cannot control AI. Well, actually, you know, it's wealthy that pushes forward because we're getting rid of all the people at the bottom having jobs. And then yeah. the question it, is, it how much do you give? Matter of fact, this came up recently of whether each person at the bottom should get 10000 a year so that they won't bother to try to kill everybody at the bottom. I don't well, know what you mean with that. So, so, so. Didn't kill anybody at the top this week. Where's my check? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> But I wasn't able to find anyone at the top of yeah. next week. In, right. in, in, the, in the new world, you won't. You'll be sitting behind a computer somewhere, and you, you won't have any idea who's outside. You may not have a job. If you think about it, maybe only a thousand people on the planet will physically have us as an owner of 10,000 or whatever and be any employees or workers. Good, then I don't want a happened. job. Yeah, but where are we going to get the money to be the consumers to the rich again? Well, that, that the real issue is once we can't consume, we lose of the others. You know that. Yeah, the right. movie, the town came That's true. Yeah, I don't think real AI will exist. I don't think it will happen. I don't think uh, the reason I believe that is um, I feel it could be against the way the universe is designed to work, and it wouldn't be allowed. If it allowed, it would have already existed probably a billion years. When it machines would have probably wouldn't self like expand the entire distance of the universe, and we have taken over the universe. It would have endangered itself. The universe wouldn't exist. The way it exists that right now. But how would a machine out to begin with? Because, what, because a machine couldn't just... Yeah. Clean what we consider if we look at an outside perspective and tell I think it could be the universe would have consciousness the way that we're having a discussion about. It wouldn't have consciousness. 
Mm. If it did, it wouldn't take up. I don't yeah. think it could have the conscience that we do, simply because I don't think AI could ever have the emotions that human beings have. Yeah, but have as much fun drunk having sex. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it could at least. I feel like it could at least have the appearance of these things, though. Like, it would be hard to s to tell who's really intelligent or really emotions, but it would look like it, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, certainly, I know some machines more intelligent than it, friends. It, it would be a calculation. It would see its own yeah. intent. Everything it would think uh, would it would it would know its own intent. Yeah. Uh -huh. like, a lot of times, people read their own day. emotions odd to things, and they. This is a type of show uh, called. I gave the psychological kind of yeah, that's the one. And they had one time where these people talked to computers that had a picture of an avatar's face on the computer, and they both uh, one looked smiled and delivered the message with a smile on his face, and the other delivered a message with a smile on his face, but they both said the exact same message and then asked the people which one of those two people they liked better and those people just took on the uh, emotions of what they, they saw on the avatar's face and liked the one that smiled even though the message was exactly word for word the same message yeah I saw that one star what I'm more worried about what demonic possession Demonic like um, possession. Yeah, I'm yeah. using the Just mind mentally. the way we <laughs> the way we're trying to master the machine, and um, um, imagine being aware of your intent, like having a device that knows what your intention is before you're consciously aware of it, and linking them up together with the machine, uh, and letting other pe people are like cloud think sort of dictate and, and direct what people want to do and think and whatnot, and then over time you will become possessed by people who are evil. Well, you know, I have to tell you, 4D, I think that you approach this uh, very interestingly and from a different perspective, and you actually should write a piece on, on something on this from yes. because it's completely different than what anybody else is saying, and so I think you should develop it into uh, a half-hour show. And no, no, I really think you should actually get out of the book. It's <laughs> very interesting and different. <laughs> Lecture. No Jimmy's like lecture. Well. <laughs> but I think it's very interesting. So you mean like if we were orgs or something, basically like hacking into somebody's brain? Is that what you meant? Um. Well, supposedly they can sort of measure your intent uh, by looking at the brain at your brain before you're even consciously aware of it. Um, oh, that people, sort of thing. Yeah, sometimes you can kind of meditate, and you can bridge the gap between that. You know, like a lot of a lot of what goes on around influences you, and you're not even aware of it. That kind of stuff. I went through a phase in my life where I would words come into my brain before people would say them, and I'm not making that up. And I realized it was just uh, what's a low latent inhibition. You know, what I'm talking about. Uh, you, not you know, sure. You're able to you're able to filter out things you're supposed to filter out, right? Well, never mind. Never mind. Sorry. I certainly worry about, um, I, I guess you were saying things a little different. I'm not sure how, but I do worry about, like, if we all were in some way, how would people mess with us? And, yeah, there are definitely a lot of media and whatnot in, um, Um, a criminal story they commit a crime, that's okay. Well, Hollywood's doing that now. They, they pretty much pour a lot of your consciousness in through television. You mean like try to control the way we think? Oh, no, they do control a lot of the way so as, as the whole thing. Yeah. We have things control. Don't think someone knows how many people will be moved out of California shortly. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, what do you have to say? I read a lot of public service announcements be done about a particular topic and could drive the public chat, like vegetarianism. <laughs> Soy <Soiling. laughs> <laughs> Reminds me, um, yeah. of the, the whole, um, people freaking out over they thought records had the back masking stuff in them, like secret messages, and I forget who said it, but there was one band member who was like, I would say, why would we have demonic messages in there? If we really wanted to put something in, in there, we'd say, buy more of our records. Yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. Laura? Yeah. <laughs> you you laugh about soil green. I'm sorry, Peter. Um, no, you laugh about soil and green. There it is. It's here. It's already here. Is it here? <laughs> oh no! Yeah. It's no, already no. here. Yeah, it is. Is I it tofu? Is it tofu? <laughs> yeah, it's totally here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, Peter. Okay, oh, I'm okay. scared. <laughs> Uh, no, I was oh, just think say about that it. You would only get to artificial intelligence, but even all this uh, algorithmic manipulation begins to re how we get fed and changed and everything else. In some way, you know, maybe you know it's not that we're there, but but certainly things are happening uh, that that make you wonder what if they do get there, what the next step would be. As Elon Musk, as you know, thinks it's demonic. And as uh, 4D says, we don't have to worry about it coming there. We'll just have demonic anyhow. Do you think it's just because we're lazy? <laughs> just, just. Do you think? Do you think we're just a lazy society that wants everything done for us, and then once lazy it's the done for of us, of invention, once it's it? done for us, then we won't have to. We'll lose all of our other skills and stuff. Well, no, we that's lost a real, a lot that's of a real fight, Kyobi. That's, I don't. I don't know how to put shoes on horses anymore. I used to. Know that that. Is, maybe. <laughs> Robots are doing a really a very large percentage of the work that uh, we've lost, and the ones that we couldn't afford have gone overseas, and they're just mm -hmm. reinventing labor continuously. Watch that video I gave you a link to. I will. Okay. Well, you know the insurance agents will be gone in five years. Ninety percent of them will be gone. They're not going to forget about sure. artificial intelligence. They're gone. There's no, you don't need them because insurance is a very simple algorithmic process. It doesn't take much to figure out where you are, what you need, and then later on to reestablish it if time changes. It really is not. And financial advisors, many of them will disappear too, but not all. The wealthy will still want somebody to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Yep. It's just it's AI, anti AI, AI helping. <laughs> Popular with you bourgeois. <laughs> go, Peter. Go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I scroll down on the I scroll on the Soylent side and it's like, what's it made of? And it's like, hint, it's not people. That's what you want us to think, Soylent Company. Mm-hmm. Come on. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say I was just gonna say that uh, when it comes to AI and the human experience, there there is a very interesting book that came out about three or four months ago. It's called the World Outside Your Head by, I think his name is Crawford. And the entire book, believe it or not, is about attention, the human attention, and how human, at human attention is constantly being delivered back and forth um, through commercialism, through uh, various types of media and so forth. I've read the introduction, and it's a truly fascinating um, uh, book. I can't wait to get started on it. I wrote it down, by the way. So I thank you, thank you yeah, for that. Yeah, uh, the, the world, know, the world behind your, the world beyond your head, or outside your head, or something. Right, like that. Michael Crawford. Yeah, I think it's Michael Crawford. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what we can find, you know, uh, Ray Kurzweil. I don't know if you know who Ray Kurzweil is. How many heroes who he is? I've but you know, there's a great sort of singularity that in order for, for the next generation to even compete, they will have to have a chip in their head. Forget about Google Glass. They'll have to be direct connected to the internet and to what have you. I'm not saying that's going to happen either, but that's, there's a lot of yeah, I think process. I thought about that too. That that's kind of a scary thought. Just to be competitive, you're going to have to your your mind's going to have to be working 24/7, even when you sleep. You know. Or act, you're going to have to access information at an yeah. extremely rapid rate. As you know, they spent four or five hundred million dollars building a 
a, a fiber optic link from Chicago to New York so that these few traders could get one one thousandth of a second faster than the other people. Mm. You know, Lauren, I work in a, in a library, and um, I'll tell you, <laughs> have you guys been to your local libraries <laughs> recently? Mm -hmm. Anybody? Um, you know, they, they used to have books in there. <laughs> but uh, now um, our library is every single floor you have a computer. Um, my particular field is um, I do document delivery. So what that means is I get a report. Class. I'm the one that does the research for it, and I find them their article, and I send it on their way. Um, it's it's a research library, but um, I, I find myself sending more ebooks all the time. Um, I don't I don't know. Uh, some people think they have space exactly. I I actually. Went to uh, uh, start reading. The thing about, about libraries is that they join together people that are interested in learning. When you bring people together that are interested in higher education, you get people that blossom ideas. Hey, ever yeah, since they you, put computers in the library, you can't park there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest problem with books. Biggest problem with books is copyright. Yeah, but Haley, yeah. do you know that I can get books from my library now on what's called Open Something or other, and 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 get it on my Kindle and read them at home. I know you don't like uh, uh, electronic readers, but I I'm borrowing books now, and they automatically get returned, so I don't have to worry about ever being charged. Yeah, I but like you're just reading copywritten material. <laughs> to go out every day. Yeah. Tomorrow, <laughs> I have to take the bus. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, because my dear no took Uber. Car Uber. and took my car. So Uber. No Uber? No, I take the bus. I like the bus. All those people, I can sit on the bus and go, my job's safe. Thanks for coming, Peter. <laughs> Google, Google's going to have a cab on the street in two years. Google will have a cab. What I want to know is this, okay? If I have two driverless vehicles that the owner sent out, one to go to the grocery store and one to go to the liquor store, and they crash, does the one that's carrying the liquor back, is it his fault or not? You know, Lauren did an excellent job here, and I think I might have even talked him into coming back again oh. to do something like this. Well, maybe Wouldn't that be maybe great? I can record she the next did a great event. Job. She was well, that great. Would be great. We're summing too. up that now, was, and, and uh, yeah. this is really it. I think we've got our time of one hour of here. Is yes. That right? Yes. Thank you yeah. so much, Lauren. You were fabulous. Yes, fabulous. It was a lot of fun. And we're never restricted. The chat can go on until everyone's tired to chat, and that's just how we really do it here. Yeah. At the same time, please um, donate to the community so we can continue to pay the rent around here and do this so that we'll be here when Lauren comes back next time.